Hi, I'm Jamie Lewis, and welcome back to TheBasis.net. A few weeks ago, I did a video called How to Automate Your Source Audio Pedals in Ableton Live. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just click on this link right here, you can check it out. But in that video, I said that in the near future, I'd be doing a full product demo video on the pedal that I was using. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about the Source Audio Aftershock Bass Distortion Pedal. Don't go anywhere, I guarantee you're gonna to wanna to see this. <laughs> Now, I've had a few weeks to spend with this thing and I've run it through its paces. Um, I've used it in the practice room, at rehearsal, on stage, in the studio. And let me first of all say that um, it's really important when you're trying a new piece of gear, be it a pedal or an amplifier or a bass or even a new brand of strings, it's really important that you try it out in multiple scenarios, not just on the showroom floor, not just in your bedroom or your practice room, wherever your amp is, uh, because you can't push it to its limits until, until you see how it works with the band or how it sits in the mix or how it you know, reacts with the room. If you really wanna push something to its limits, you've gotta take it out and you've gotta try and, and, and put it through its paces. And let me just say that this Aftershock pedal did not disappoint in any of those scenarios. So let me start by just playing it for you. I'm gonna plug in a bass in just a second. Um, I'll give you a couple examples so you can hear what this thing sounds like, and then we'll dive under the hood and I'll show you everything that this pedal can do. sounding pedal, um, and in my opinion, extremely versatile. Uh, I could go from just a little bit of tube saturation to full-blown, fuzzy, overdriven mayhem, and, and anywhere in between, all with just one pedal. Um, and on the surface, it looks like any other distortion pedal, any other stomp box. It's got four knobs, it's very easy, and an on and off button. Up top, we got a drive, a level, and uh, below that, a tone knob, which if you've used a distortion pedal before, you know what those do. This right here, we've got a clean dial. And what that lets us do is bring in some of our unprocessed signal. And this is a huge feature to have on an overdrive distortion fuzz pedal, anything of that nature. Because here's what happens. Uh, distortion is a form of compression, right? We're taking these waves and we're just squaring them off, off at top and, and it clips them and it creates the distortion sound. But when you do that, you tend to lose some of your low end. If you've ever plugged into um, a distortion pedal before and you start playing, you're like, wow, my, th my tone's getting really thin. That's the reason why. Um, and so to have a, a clean knob to just bring in ever so much, or as much as you want, of your original unprocessed sound, you can dial back in some of your low end, which, you know, the bass guitar, we want to have that low end in there. Now, on top of just like your four basic knobs and, and a bypass button, uh, we've also got this three-way switch in the middle that uh, one reads tube, the middle one says heavy, the other one says fuzz. You can't read those from the screen, but uh, that's what they say. And you don't have to have a tube sound and a heavy sound and a fuzz sound. You can set them to be whatever you want um, in, in the presets, and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. My only gripe with this pedal is, is this switch right here. Um, there's not really a practical way for you to switch between them on the fly, uh, like at a gig, besides like kneeling down to your pedal board and, and flipping that switch over. Now, you can access these different sounds if you purchase some peripherals, like the Source Audio Neuro System, I think is what it's called, or in the video I mentioned last time uh, about controlling it with Ableton Live, well then you could, do, uh, you could control your parameters that way. But those all require you to purchase some other peripherals. So unlike other multi-effects unit, which this kind of is, it's three distortions in one, uh, th there's no way to get to all three of them on a gig except for kneeling down mid-song and, and flipping it over or in between songs or something like that. So that's the only thing that's clunky about it. it and again, I'm just, I'm being honest, I'm, I'm telling it like I see it. But still a great pedal and, and there are ways to control this switch. Otherwise, it's just, you have to pay extra for them. 
And one other thing that sets this pedal apart from any other distortion box in its class um, is its dual input and dual output design. And if I read this from the Source Audio website, it says that the stereo inputs and outputs plus its dual drive circuits make it possible to stack any combination of drive engines in either series or parallel, as well as split the signal and send a separate drive engine to each of the pedal's outputs. So what the heck does that mean? It means that there's actually two overdrive pedals or two overdrive engines inside of this one pedal. And you can control them together or separately. Meaning I can plug my bass into input one. And then with the Nero software, which again, I'm gonna get to in a second, um, I could have two different overdrive stages. One of them is a lightly overdriven signal. And then the next one's like full on crunchy. Say I'm gonna take a guitar solo or I just wanna take it from step one to step 10, right? Uh, I, I could stage those so it goes from one to the other and then it comes out of output one. Or you could do what I just said, creating two different overdrive stages, one that's a little crunchy and then one that's full on overdriven. Um, plug in my bass to channel one and have those two sounds, but then I could run output one to one bass amp or one channel of my recording console and then output two to another bass amp or another channel of my recording console or front of house. And then that way you can actually blend these sounds in post. Or I guess technically you could plug in two different basses, one in input one, one in input two, uh, overdrive them separately and then output them to two different amps, which I guess is a bit unnecessary for, for my circumstances, but maybe you're, you're in a band with two bass players and you wanna share the same pedal. I don't know, it's just that, that option is possible as well. Now, a moment ago I said that on the surface, it's a very simple pedal, and I mean that. On the surface, it just looks like a regular guitar pedal. There's four knobs, an on and off button, minus this whole stereo input and output thing. It's pretty basic, you've seen this before. However, there is a whole other layer that you can access uh, with, with a laptop computer or with a smartphone or with a tablet. I haven't used the phone or the tablet. I, I guess they connect via Wi-Fi or something. I really don't know. Uh, but if you want to connect it to a computer, there's a USB port on here. Plug straight to my laptop. And then I can control way more parameters of this thing than just the four knobs. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do right now. Check this out. So this right here is the Neuro desktop app. And again, you can do this from either your phone or a tablet. I'm just choosing to use a laptop because it's easier to do a screen recording and it's what I got. Uh, all of your pedals would appear over here. I only have the one, the Aftershock bass distortion. But if I hit this little wrench icon, it pulls up all of these parameters that I can adjust for this one pedal that again, only had four knobs on it. The four knobs that it have are the, the drive knob right here, the clean mix knob over here, the level, which is output, and then tone knob, which is this treble knob. Now I'm controlling these, you can see they're moving on screen, but I'm controlling them from my pedal. So you can actually do it both ways. I can move the physical knobs on my pedal and these parameters will adjust, or I can uh, you know, obviously do it here from screen or from the phone or whatever. These over here are my presets. So you can see uh, you know, once I hit this, everything reset. Once I hit heavy, they all move to wherever heavy is. Once I hit fuzz, they all go where they're supposed to go. Um, these are your presets. These are the factory default ones and I can create three user presets. I don't have any presets because I did a, a factory reset uh, just before making this video. But you can control these presets over here by clicking on them the way I just did or I can select them on the physical pedal itself. And same thing, you can see over here, all these parameters change when I choose the fuzz channel or the heavy channel or whatever. Just a really quick overview, you can see we have a left and a right channel uh, distortion. I mean, these uh, settings are all identical. We have drive, output, voice, voice frequency. I mean, they're the same for the left as they are for the right. Because remember, this is a stereo dual engine uh, distortion, so you could plug in two bases and distort them separately or run channel left into channel right. Or, you know, we'll get into the routing options a little bit later, but basically you just have two different distortion engines. Obviously there's more parameters up here than we have on the pedal itself. Uh, we have this voice knob, the voice frequency, a drive balance, drive max, and a four band parametric EQ. All right, so these are all things that you can't access from the pedal itself. You have to log in with the, uh, with the app. And then over here, we can choose our actual distortion engine. You can see there's a big pie. Okay, that's something like a big muff. Bass big pie, there's a bass big muff. Uh, what else we got? A germanium, a, the clone. I'll bet that's something like a clone. 
uh, something like a rat. I'll bet you anything in here that says screamer is something like a tube screamer. Yeah, very screamer or whatever. Um, so we just have different drive engines. And I can show you really quickly that they all sound a little bit different. The first one, the default says bass tube drive. And here's what it sounds like. Uh, let me pull the clean down so we're hearing just the distortion. And I'm not gonna change any of these settings, but I'm just gonna pull up a different drive engine, or basically make it a different pedal. Let's see what the germanium sounds like. That is so cool that I haven't changed a single thing, yet I have a totally different sounding uh, distortion. What about the rat? I love the rat pedal. Where is it? I know I, know I saw, oh, it's right here. versus something like the bass Big Muff. So I think it's so awesome that they, they include these different emulations of different pedals, basically, because uh, you can get totally different sounds just by choosing a different engine. And then if I want to, I can get in there and, and, and change these settings. You can just create so many totally different sounds from just one stinking pedal. So again, anything I can do here on the left, I can do on the right, and I'll get into the routing stuff a little bit later. Down here, you can see there's a parametric equalizer, and basically, uh, this sets... Okay, so over here we have this, this four-band EQ, right? When I adjust my bass knob, what frequency am I adjusting? Well, I'm adjusting 61 hertz. Why? Because I have 61 hertz selected here. If I want to adjust 30... Where is 30? I'll bring it, yeah, bring it down here. If I want to adjust 30 hertz or something in the 20s, when I look over here, this knob is adjusting 30 hertz, right? Uh, my mid frequency, well, what, what's my low mid set at? Well, right now it's set for 294, but I could set it for 400 something. 450 is a really ugly frequency. I just always pull that one out. Um, you can adjust the Q, that's, that's how wide uh, the, the slope is on the EQ. Um, I can set this one to be kind of more in the 800, 900 range to, you know, make it sound a little more burpy or, you know, in the 1.2 to get some of the pick attack uh, if I'm playing with a pick or whatever. So, I mean, you can just get really nitty gritty with, you know, just these four EQ knobs um, and, and your parametric equalizer over here. There's also a, a high pass and a low pass filter. Basically, this is a, a low end roll off and a high end roll off that you can utilize as well. And then down here, you can see we also have a noise gate and uh, some other filters, another filter gate. Uh, these are just kind of to clean up your sound and get rid of some of the noise. Right now, there's a noise gate enabled. I'll turn it off and you can hear all that extra hiss and, and buzz and noise. Now it goes away. This kind of makes it sound a little bit cleaner, I guess, if I play a little bit. Right, you can see how when I stopped playing, there was some noise ringing out. If I hit this guy, so it just cuts off my notes a little bit earlier. Now down here, this is where it gets interesting. You can see we've got these I/O routing options. I/O meaning in and out. So right now it's set for default or auto select. That means channel one or the left channel. Is the only one that's working. If I do anything over here on channel two, you can see absolutely nothing's happening. But if I come over here to the I/O and I select, whoops, I select um, stereo in, stereo out, that means that channel one is going to go to output one, and channel two is going to go to output two. So this would be like if I was plugging in two bases going into two different amps or something like that. Which again, I don't see myself ever using, but it's an option. Now, let's say I wanted to do this one, mono in, stereo process, mono out. So now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna distort my left channel, then I'm gonna run it into the right channel and distort it again, and then I'm gonna hit my output. So let's do this one, uh, let's leave this one where it's at and just pull the drive down a little bit, but this guy, let's go with something really aggressive. Uh... There's one in here called metal. Yeah, <laughs> that one's bound to be aggressive. So let's see if I pull the output out. 
So right now we're only hearing the left channel. And I apologize that I keep playing the same riffs over and over again, but it's a good idea when you're doing this kind of stuff <laughs> to, you know, to hit it over and over again, uh, get your ears used to it. So this one. And I'm gonna run that into this guy. Oops, I forgot to turn the output on first. So let's get the output up. And so this would be a cool idea for, let's say, this is your main sound, and then when I go to a solo, you know, I want to I want to hit that second stage of distortion and really crank it up. Well, that's how you would want to do it. If you want to come down here and go mono in stereo process stereo out. This is that cool one I was talking about where, um, you know, the left channel is coming out of the left output and the right channel is coming out of the right output. So both of them are not going to my amp or the same channel, but they're coming out separately so I can blend them later in post-production or I can give it to the front of house guy and he can mix the two together. This is uh, engine one right now. All right, nothing that I do over here makes any difference because we're only hearing this one. But watch what happens. I'm gonna unplug engine one, and I'm gonna plug it into engine two. All right, now this one is what's going to my amper. This is the one that you're hearing because I physically unplugged it from the pedal. So I could go have that sound go into one amp or one channel on the console. I could have this sound over here. And later in post, I can blend those two together, which is really freaking cool. So now let's say that I want to create a preset. I'm going to come back over here to this default, uh, you know, so just the left channel is going to be on. All I got to do is click on this 001 empty slot, and it's reset it to something different. So, you know, let's go back to that base big pie. I thought that was pretty awesome. Let's drive it up a bit. Really like that top end in there. And let's say I really like that sound. All I gotta do is hit save as, and we'll name it, uh, I don't know, bass, big muff. That should make sense. Hit save, and now I've got it right here. And you can see I can go between any of my other presets, and as soon as I come back to this one, boom, all my settings go the same. And I can also, do this from the pedal now. I'm ch changing the dial on the pedal itself and it's going between my, you know, the one I just created and then these other two which are empty obviously because we haven't done anything with them yet. But you can do it that way as well. Now, I, there's a couple more things down here that I haven't really gotten into yet, but you know, I'll just share them with you. Um, these external switching types um, and, and whatnot, I imagine this is for the source audio uh, neuro system, which I don't have, but you can set them for momentary or toggle, latching. <clears throat> you can select what the switch is or what it does. This one, I can select something different for the clean knob and the tone knob that are on my pedal itself. So right now, my clean knob is set for clean or distortion, but I can set that for the bass level, the treble. You know, you can kind of uh, mix and match what you want those two physical knobs to do, not just for the clean, but also for the tone knob as well. Now, to be honest, this pedal is a win-win for me because on the one hand, it's super simple and then it's ultra complex. Um, simple in the sense that, again, just four buttons on the gig, just go down, tweak them where you want. It's a regular guitar pedal. I don't need peripherals. I don't have to have a laptop or a phone or something. To, like the, the pedal will just work by plugging my bass into it and then plugging the other end into my amplifier. So it's just a regular guitar pedal. It's idiot proof. But if I want to plug it into, say, my laptop or log into it with my phone, I can't believe I just said log into a guitar pedal with my phone, but that's a thing now. If I want to do that, now it's tweaker's paradise. I have more parameters to adjust than I have fingers for. And if you want to take it to the next level, that video that I mentioned at the beginning, and the link's popping up again right now if you haven't seen it, then you can take it to a whole nother level. You can automate these parameters to happen in real time while you're playing. So then I don't even need to stomp on this thing anymore. I don't need to grab any of the knobs. They'll just do it all for me. And then there's the fact that actually this one pedal is really two pedals. Theoretically, you know, three settings that you can control independently. That means this thing packs a ton of value because number one, um, it frees up real estate on your pedal board. Instead of needing two pedals or three pedals, one for overdrive, one for fuzz, one for distortion, 
Well, you just need the one and, and you can route it however you want <laughs> and choose those settings, uh, which also then frees up real estate in your power supply because instead of powering three pedals, now I just need to power the one. Which let's face it, if, if you rock a pedal board, you know it's a space management game. <laughs> you need to get it as small as you can, as light as you can, as travel worthy as you can, but it's got to have the right sounds. It's got to fit um, and you got to be able to use it on any gig, not just the big ones. So, I mean, that alone, just the value you get out of one pedal, that makes it a no-brainer for me. So I hope that you get a chance yourself to plug into this thing and take it for a test drive and run it through its paces in your playing scenario. Again, I think it's great. I think it's an awesome pedal. It packs a ton of value in. And as far as I'm aware, there is no other single stomp box pedal that comes even close to doing what this thing can do in its price range. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, please click on that like button below. And if you wouldn't mind, please share this video. I would greatly appreciate your help. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, it's really easy. There's a subscribe button below this video. Just go ahead and click that and you'll get updates whenever I upload another video, like another demo one like this, or a bass lesson, or a performance video, or anything like that. So thanks again, take care, and I'll see you next time here at TheBassist.net. Hey, if you like what I do, please click on the subscribe button right here. And if you really like what I do, then click over here to see how affordable it is to join me at thebasis.net. But if you just want the free stuff, then click here to check out whatever YouTube's sophisticated robots think you should watch next. I'm sure they know what's best for you.